If we truly believe in the good news of the kingdom, we will not do anything that hinders our ability to tell it. Once again, it's so important. If we truly believe in the good news of the kingdom, we will not do anything that hinders our ability to tell it. Thanks so much, Mark Numair. I didn't hear you the first time. Why? Well, let's find out. Let's open up to Peter's words himself. Peter, 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 12. 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 12. Peter helps us here with why we need to maintain our conduct properly. 1 Peter 2, 12. Maintain your conduct fine among the nations, so that when they accuse you of being wrongdoers, they may be eyewitnesses of your fine works, and as a result, glorify God in the day of his inspection. So Peter had to learn this. But do we see the connection? Our actions and words are directly linked to Jehovah. When people see us, they see a people that worships Jehovah. And when people hear us, they hear a people that worship Jehovah. Imagine how our freeness of speech to speak about God's kingdom would be hindered if we were to voice a position for a political issue. And it can happen so easily. It can happen at work or at school with relatives and so forth. Satan sets the trap masterfully. He's just waiting. If he could only make us chop off the ear of anything in this world that causes hurt and indignation in our heart. If he can hook our heartstrings by getting us emotionally charged, he can then step back and reel us in. The new world, our hope for true peace, it all starts to fade into the background. Don't give him that chance. Two things stood out for me in this part of Mark Numair's talk, Loyally Support the Prince of Peace. I found it incredibly hypocritical when Mark Numair started talking about freeness of speech. Our actions and words are directly linked to Jehovah. When people see us, they see a people that worships Jehovah. Imagine how our freeness of speech to speak about God's kingdom would be hindered if we were to voice a position for a political issue. Mark Numair is worried about rank-and-file Jehovah's Witnesses engaged in the preaching work, losing their freeness of speech, not being able to effectively act as spokespersons for Jehovah if they have political opinions, if they voice a position for a political issue, this would apparently be so terrible that people would be put off from listening to whichever Jehovah's Witness voices a political issue. They would be put off from hearing the kingdom message. Well, can't the same be said of the organization's track record on child sexual abuse? And in fact, isn't the organization's terrible track record, the fact that it keeps a secret database with the names of thousands of predators that the authorities don't know anything about because it hasn't been reported or the names haven't been reported, isn't that of far graver concern than whether an individual has a political opinion? If anything, if I were trying to engage with someone and learn more about their religion, I'd be able to relate to them more if they had the freedom to voice political views. I think, okay, this is a person who isn't being micromanaged, they can think for themselves, and they're allowed to reach their own conclusions about the world around them and engage in the world around them. That's a positive. It would be a positive. A negative would be an organization with a terrible track record on child sexual abuse, an organization that mandates shunning even in the family so that mothers and fathers aren't speaking to their children or vice versa, and brothers aren't speaking to sisters, etc. And an organization that persuades people to die rather than accept blood transfusions. I could go on. 
all of those things are far more damning and make it far harder to take this organization seriously than an individual voicing a political opinion. Then you have Mark Numer saying, If he can hook our heartstrings by getting us emotionally charged, he can then step back and reel us in. Of course, Mark Numer is here talking about Satan. Satan is apparently hooking our heartstrings by getting us emotionally charged, trying to get us to take sides. But couldn't he just as easily be describing Jehovah's Witness propaganda? Isn't Jehovah's Witness propaganda emotionally charged? Isn't Jehovah's Witness propaganda with its sentimental, you know, dramatic music intended to hook our heartstrings? So again, you have hypocrisy. Apparently, emotional manipulation is bad when it's Satan doing it, but Jehovah's organization or the governing body, oh, it's totally fine. They get a free pass. Mm -hmm.